this night. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of angels <coughs> praising God. Luke 2.13 but, but thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. His goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Seeds for cattle, their manger, the seeds for cattle, their manger, his bed, they may be drunk where he may be still. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger because there was no room for the bed. Two seven. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, to be the one for him to Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Matthew 2, 1 and 2. At this birthday, I came and God, brought by the wise as Matthew has taught. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child and his mo with his mother Mary, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Matthew 2:11. G. He is for God, who from heaven above sent down to mankind the soul of the Lord. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16, H. H is for Herod. <coughs> and when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee to Egypt and be thou there until I bring the word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him Matthew 2 13 I I ask for Emmanuel God with us Isaiah the prophet told of this promise Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a son. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah 7, 14. J. Transfer Joseph to no boy just obeying God's word with absolute trust. When Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. Matthew 1, 24. Okay. Case for King Andrew James, coming with power and authority. L. I mean, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Zechariah 9 9. L. L is for God that he brought down to earth in flesh and lower birth. In this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. 1 John 4, 9, M. And this for Mary, his mother so brave, counting 
God, faithful and mighty to save. And Mary said, Behold the, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Luke 1, 38. And, and it's the night when the Savior was born for nations of earth and people forlorn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Luke 28, no, 2, 8. And, and omnipotent, meaning all-powerful, only he could take care of our sin bill. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of many thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reign. Revolu Revelation 19.6, P. His prophets for living on earth foretold his redemption and blessed for birth. I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Numbers 24:17. Q. He was for quickly a shepherd's who heard came from the act of the heavenly word. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Luke 2:16. R. Ours for rejoice because the debt has been paid. For all of our sins on him were laid. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53, 6. As his for Savior to be this, he came, the angel of God assigned him his name. And he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 21. T. T is for tiny and joy. T is for tiny and joy, not a danger. Tell him him who lay in the manger. Yes. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. You is for unspeakable. Jesus was, was God's gift to all, redeeming man from Adam's fall. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. <coughs> Hey guys. Yes. He is for virgin for told by say the God revelation of the cross page. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Matthew 123. W. W is for wonderful, whose works and his works. The kings of all kings, the Lord of all lords. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9, 6. X. X is a tricky letter. Some people use it to replace Christ on signs, but I never will. I want his love to shine. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. From thy God. Why? Why is for you thy God? That whose God is, for he has redeemed you in so short. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Colossians 1.14. Z. Z is for Zillow, and others tell about what Jesus has done, not just our Christmas, but all through the year. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Mark 16.15.
Matthew 2. Matthew 2. Listen fast. We're going to go fast this morning. All right. Matthew chapter number 2. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not thou least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel." All right, then we'll just read the rest of it here just a little bit later. But uh, here in Matthew chapter number 2, we see the wise men under divine instruction had been following a star which they saw doubtless for many days. And what a privilege that is. What a privilege. When I say what a privilege it is, of course, they were led, divinely led to the Savior. But what a privilege it would be to be on the welcoming committee. Amen of the Savior, Jesus Christ, born wrapped in flesh, laid in a manger there in Bethlehem. They had been chosen to be on the welcoming committee for the arrival of Messiah. Their single ambition was to fulfill that mission and to be among the first to take notice on earth of the coming of the Savior. Now, a lot of people are, uh, they have the events of the scripture. They say, what about Luke chapter number two and Matthew chapter number two, how it calls Jesus a young child. And in Luke chapter number two, it calls him a babe. I have a little outline here if you'd like to write it down. If not, um, I'll give it to you after the service. But first of all, we got Christ the Lord Jesus. God became flesh, born of a virgin, laid in a manger, uh, in a stable. There was no room for them in the end. Luke chapter number 2 verse 7. Christ born in a stable. Born there, laid in a stable, in a manger, in the stable. All right, number two. This is the order of events. Number two, the shepherds arrived to tell their story. Luke chapter number 2 verse 15 through 17. We understand according to Luke chapter 2 verse 21, Jesus had to be circumcised after eight days. Joseph, Mary, and Jesus visit the temple in Luke chapter number 2, verse number 22, and the family return to live in some structure or some house there in Bethlehem, Matthew chapter number 2, verse number 11. And the reason I believe that is Mary had to wait out the days of her purification according to Levit Leviticus chapter number 12. They didn't leave Bethlehem, and then... We find the wise man coming here in Matthew chapter 2 while still in Bethlehem. The wise man coming to pay homage. Some people have the wise man visiting after two years. Jesus wasn't in Bethlehem when he was two years old. Jesus had left Bethlehem and Joseph was warned to flee into Egypt. And so it would be uh, fulfilled of the writing according to Matthew chapter 2, verse number 13, Matthew chapter number 2, verse number 15. And then the family returned to Nazareth in Matthew chapter 2. Now, I went pretty fast. I told you I was going to f go fast. And so that should hopefully put things into perspective because um, a lot of, I've heard preachers say, well, when the Magi came or the wise man came, it wasn't in the manger. Jesus was still in Bethlehem when the wise man did come. And uh, he, the message, though, the message is not to argue about where he was at or where exactly he was laying. The message is that they found the Savior. They found the Savior whom they were looking for. The star, the divine star, had led the Magi, had led the wise man to the Savior. And that tells me that God will lead anyone disposed to find the Savior. He will lead you. The Bible tells you in John chapter number 1 that you have light. The, light, the Son of God lights every man that comes into the world. You act upon that light, God will give you more light. The, the wise men were searching for the Savior. They followed the light that they had. The light stopped, and for a period of time, it was providential it stopped so that everything could be fulfilled uh, about Herod getting the news and then of course Herod sending out people later on to kill all the babies and that fulfills Jeremiah's prophecies of the uh, people that were weeping, the women that were weeping because their children was not and so on like that. Then the star reappeared and it came and it stood over where the child was. 
The light led them directly to the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friend, you have enough light right here in the Word of God. You have enough light through the Christmas program. You've got enough light through Matthew chapter number 2. If you want to find the Savior, you have a promise that you can find Him. And your search will always lead you to Him and who He is and what He has done for you. Jesus Christ, the virgin-born Son of God, miraculously born, God become a man. Only God can forgive sin. Only God is the perfect sacrifice. Jesus, the Lamb without blemish, the perfect sacrifice for the sins of humanity. It happened that day 2,000 years ago on Calvary. Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, laid in a manger, lived a sinless life, went to Calvary, paid the sins for the entire world, past, present, and future, telling anyone, if you want to know Christ, you can find Him. If you will trust Him, He will impute to you what you need to go to heaven. That is the righteousness of His dear Son. Will you trust Him today as your Savior? Amen. Now, the, f <laughs> the first, the first instructive response when they saw the star was they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Look at Matthew chapter 2, verse 10. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Look up that word exceeding. Everyone says we have joy. We have joy. And we've experienced joy. And then some people go as far as to say we have great joy. Great joy. Every, you know, there was a fellow up in Crossville. Every time you'd ask him how he's doing, he'd say, every day is Christmas. When he got in trouble, I asked him about that, you know. Every day, but still every day was Christmas in that he's rejoicing. But these wise men said they rejoice with what kind of joy? Exceeding great joy. They couldn't contain themselves. And my dear friend, when you find the Lord Jesus Christ, and by the way, the Lord Jesus Christ is not lost. You are. Amen. But he has instructed us to seek him while he may be found. He has told us in Jeremiah 29, 13, that if you will seek him with all your heart, what's the, what's the promise and the response? You will find him. So, amen. So God is so wonderful in that everything is accomplished, but then he tells you to seek him. And then he gives you everything you need to find him right here in the word of God. What a wonderful Savior He is. All right, so they rejoice with exceeding great joy. When you find the Savior, my dear friend, you tell everyone you're so happy, your joy is overflowing, your cup is filled. Just say all of the good words. That's what you are. I am a new creature. I, my boy was in my room last night. We were talking, and, and uh, he talked about a new creature. And I said, that's exactly what you are, a new creature, if you've trusted Christ. You're a brand new creature. Something out of nothing. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, a lot of people misinterpret uh, that verse and so that, say that, well, that means when you're a new creature, then all of the sin stops. I wish it did, but that means you have the power to let it all stop. That's what it does mean. You're a brand new creature in Christ. So the first instructive response when they saw the star was they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Their hearts couldn't contain the joy. It was exceeding Great joy. The second result is they stood in the presence of the Savior. Look at verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. They stood in the very presence of the Savior. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother. There was no sound of an ecclesiastical organ. There was no song by an unseen choir. There was no pomp, no fireworks, no display. Yet right there in front of their eyes, the baby Jesus, who would take away the sins of the world. Remember what John said in John chapter number 1, verse number 29? Behold, I love how you brought that out, Brother Dewey. Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. I am so glad. When we behold Him, I stand amazed in the presence of deity. When we behold Him. When did you behold Christ? 
When did you be holy? When did you see Christ for who He really is? As being your Savior, as taking care of all of your sins, uh, as satisfying the, uh, the uh, demands of a holy God, doing something that you could not possibly accomplish, and He did it for you. When did you behold Him? Yeah. Amen. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus of Galilee. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, again, they were right there in the Lord Jesus, right in front of their eyes. The baby Jesus who would take away the sins of the world. And I said, I used John chapter number 1, verse number 29. John said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Did he take them away or did he not take them away? He did take them away. Did John know what he was talking about? Yes, he did. Did the Magi, the wise men, know what they said when they said, Behold. I behold, I'm in the very presence of Christ. I see Him. And of course, I'm paraphrasing, and you can read Matthew chapter number 2. They recognized, they believed the message. They acted upon truth. The truth led them to the very Son of God. Their eyes, like Simeon, saw God's salvation. They beheld His salvation. Amen. Amen. Their third result, the third result, you just can't help it, the third result was they worshipped the king. This worship was not a planned experience. It wasn't a planned experience. It wasn't a printed menu. This worship was a natural act of humble man in the presence of deity. Do you remember Job? Everyone remembers Job. If you've went through any trials or tribulations, every one of you have turned to Job and you've read about Job. Job always wanted to give his defense before a holy God. He said, if he would only show up, I would tell him. I would talk to him. You know when God showed up, you know what it's recorded in the Bible that Job did? He, he, he fell down in the presence of deity in sackcloth and ashes. And the Bible said he abhorred himself. When you come in the presence of deity, you realize just how small you are and how great he is. Amen. Just how small you are and how great he is. When we realize the greatness of God and the littleness of man, my dear friend, that's when God can do something with you. And the, the Magi realized that. Of course, the first response was they rejoiced. The second response is they stood in the presence of, sa of the Savior. The third result is that they worshiped their king. Now, so what now? So what now? Well, the Bible said in verse number 13... And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be there until I bring thee word. For Herod shall seek the young child to destroy him. Well, I meant to read verse 12. Let's back up to verse 12. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. You know what, I've, uh, I've read verse 12 over and over and over and over, but this, every time you study a portion of Scripture, the Lord gives you little nuggets. I wrote down this particular time in, 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 for this sermon in 2016, I wrote down right here in the margin of my Bible, so I'll always remember it, the nugget, happy is the man who has no difficulty responding to God's Word. Happy is the man who has no difficulty responding to God's word. The Bible said that God spoke to him in verse number 12, and they listened and they went in another way. Now, I've got a, I've got a little, um, little, little sermon there on verse number 12. When a person gets saved, when people meet the Lord Jesus Christ, life has new meaning. Behold, the Bible talks about, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, uh, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. According to uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 15, We don't live to ourselves, but unto him is what the Bible said. People who meet the Lord Jesus Christ personally are altogether different. Different. Jesus 
Christ makes all the difference. When a person meets Christ, he goes home by a different way. He does not go according to the course of this world, according to Ephesians chapter number 2 and verse number 2. He no longer walks after the course of this world, after the devil. No, he's got a brand new goal, a brand new concept, a brand new desire. Everything is new. My home is in heaven. Amen. Presently, amen, presently as a child of God, we're looking for that city right now. Not made with hands, whose builder and maker with God is God. The man that's trusted Christ refuses to follow counsel of the ungodly. In this particular case, they refuse to follow the counsel of Herod. They followed God's counsel. When you come face to face with a holy God, you pursue life, my dear friend, in a different manner. It's a different course. The world thinks it's strange that you run not with them to the, ex, uh, the same excess of riot. You'll find that in 1 Peter chapter number 4 and verse number 4. When a person trusts Christ as their Savior, they cannot imagine life without Him. My question is, have you trusted Christ as your Savior? Have you followed the light given? The light, of course, God lights every man that comes into the world by creation. Romans 1, He gives you a conscience. Uh, the Bible lets us know that with that conscience, He will either accuse or excuse ourselves with a conscience. And uh, we also know, according to Romans chapter number 3, we have the very oracles of God. The light has been given. Will you act upon that light? Will you trust Christ as your personal Savior? The wise man did. And wise men still seek Him. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. We'll be dismissed. Brother Dana, you come get us a song. We're going to have an invitation. The invitation's for you. If you need some more help, if you need some questions answered, will you come? We have men and women here that will go off with you and sit down and open their Bible and answer your questions. Or maybe you'd just like to come and just praise the Lord and thank God for everything that He's done for you, especially during this Christmas season. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the mercy and goodness of God. We thank you, Lord, for what's happened here today. We thank you, Lord, for the Lord Jesus Christ especially, but we thank you for the children. We thank you for those that helped plan the program and had the message of Christmas. Thank you, dear Lord, that this season, Lord, we can still proclaim our Savior in this country. Thank you for a country, dear God, that still allows us to do that. But thank you, Lord, for the Word of God and the Holy Spirit of God who prompts us to do that. In Jesus' name, amen.